What's up, comic book fans? It's the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy. It is the Emerald Enthusiast, here with an unboxing of the Marvel Legends Ragnarok. As you can see, I recently found this figure on deep clearance. So let's take a look at the package details. There's the Thor symbol at the top, product information on the bottom. We get Ragnarok artwork on the side and the back here. There's also a brief bio of Ragnarok. Here is a close-up of the biography in five different languages. If you would like to read any of these, go ahead and pause the video and do so now. And now it's time to bust this figure out of the package and see what's inside. This is an interesting character in the comics. He's a cyborg created by Tony Stark and Reed Richards using the DNA of Thor. And things did not go well, as you might expect. But let's go ahead and take a look at the loose details of this figure. With the exception of the cyborg parts, this figure has a very similar look to the classic Thor. I like the sculpting on the boots here, as well as the sculpting on the quadriceps muscles here. You get movement here at the ankles, so you can get him in a flying pose. He has double jointed knees. You can see one of the pins here. He also has a quadricep swivel, as you can see. He has really good movement here at the hips. You can get him to kick forward that much. You can get him to kick out to the side considerably. You can't get him to step back very well, though. But if you'd like to get him into a deep side kicking pose, you have the articulation to do that. And he has good movement here at the waist. As you can see, this is not a cloth cape, but I do like how it swoops down underneath his hair. Lots of good wrinkles sculpted in as well. The hair and the cape do cause a considerable articulation issue, and I will get to that in just a minute. This head sculpt has a partial cybernetic face. Here's a look at the cybernetic hand, and that is colored and sculpted very well. This is the replica Mjolnir that Ragnarok carried in the comics. He's got double jointed elbows and a bicep swivel, as well as good movement at the wrist. He does have the upper torso swivel. Mine feels especially tight. Hopefully if you get one of these figures, that will not be the case for you. There's enough movement in the shoulder joints here. If you'd like to get his arms to go out and back a little bit in that big power pose, you do have that option. Here's a close-up of the head sculpt, and it does look very striking. I don't have any issues with the aesthetics, but trying to turn the head, it's very limited due to the cape and the hair. And really, if you try to lift that hair over the cape, the head just kind of pops off. That doesn't damage the figure. The head pops back on very easily, but I just had to highlight that articulation issue. So here's a close-up of both head sculpts. And as you can see, lots of fine sculpting and paintwork there. I really don't have any issues with the aesthetics. Here is a close-up of the figure with the alternate head sculpt on. And as you would expect, it has the same articulation issue. If you are a serious collector, you simply have to appreciate this level of detail on an accessory. Even though we've seen similar spinning hammer accessories before, I am still impressed by the ingenuity. Here is a close-up of the alternate hand, and if you were wondering, yes, the wristbands are removable. I hope you have enjoyed this unboxing video. If so, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for some articulation shots, and also remember to catch me on the Multiverse Musings vidcast, available right here on YouTube. And I'll be back to the internet with more comic book-related content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast, and thanks for watching.